Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. So this is what the radio looks like. It's about the exact same size of the screen that's in the dash, which is pretty pathetic. I mean, look at look at how wide all this is. You got this tiny little screen. I mean, my cell phone is bigger than that screen. So yeah, we're gonna be removing this and changing it all up to aftermarket with a larger screen. These are the two parts we're gonna be using in this video today, which is an XAV AX150. That's the head unit we're gonna be using today. And this is an ITC FD05B. It is the skosh kit for the Ford Mustang. These are the two parts that we're gonna be using today in this vehicle to do an aftermarket head unit in it. I'm gonna start with removing this piece here. We're gonna take our plastic pry tool and we're gonna to pry out on this piece right here. So we pulled this off with our plastic pry tool. Basically, there's your backside. You got two clips and then one clip at the top. So now we're gonna remove this piece by basically we're going to take our plastic pry tool and we're gonna trim all the way around this. So we're just gonna take it and kind of pull out, pry all the way around. There's clips all the way around, so you wanna be real careful when you're pulling this out. All right, so we pop this bad boy off. Here's the backside, all the clips here. There's a lot of them. And that's what it looks like without it on there. And I will tell you, if you've never had this piece off, it will be hard to pull on. So just be careful. Don't jerk or you'll break stuff. So just be extremely careful. All right, next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plastic pry tool and we're gonna pry this piece off. And when you do, there's gonna be a lot. You can do it by hand too, but it's easier with the plastic pry tool. And you're gonna have all these plastic pieces on the back, these snap clips. And then underneath here, you're gonna have one seven millimeter and another, another seven millimeter. You're gonna to wanna to do that on the other side as well so we can pull the center console back right here. Same thing on this side, you can use a plastic pry tool, you can grab them by hand. And you wanna remove these, boom, that's off. That's the back side right here. We're gonna set that aside. And then we got seven millimeter, seven millimeter. We're going to have to kind of pull up on this piece here, um, unsnap it up, and then we're gonna pull this back. We'll have to put this into down into here to pull this back. I want to pull up to where all this whole piece comes up, and then you're gonna it's separated, and then you want to pull it back. You want to get this whole piece up and pull it back. We also took this rubber piece out right here. Take these two seven millimeters out as well. We've got this piece all pulled up, pulled back. I put the transmission back into park. Hold this kind of separated it from it um, we also took out these two seven millimeters and then now we're going to pull this panel off right here and uh, we're going to have to remove this seven millimeter and this seven millimeter here and then we just pop this piece out right here and magically behind there we have two more seven millimeters now that we have these two removed these two removed we should be able to just pull this bad boy out it is strong in there and why too man damn these all these clips are super tight I mean, this car is new it's never probably been taken apart before but we're gonna go ahead and unplug this bad boy and remove it here's the plugs you're gonna unplug from behind one here one here and USB so you have two plugs basically cigarette lighter power lighter and USB everything is removed out 
here's the plugs that you're going to unplug this one right here which unplugs down here you have this long one here which unplugs here you're gonna have this one here which unplugs right here and then this bad boy has a connector on top and on bottom and you'll just basically want to pull up and pull back and that's all four connectors right there that you'll want to remove next step you're going to want to do is you're going to, have to take out these four seven millimeters here to remove the brain and then four seven millimeters up here one two three four to remove the four inch screen here's the back of this we remove this plug this plug and this blue plug right here i'll show you those inside the car as well here's the plugs we have a large like european style that uses the swivel we have this black plug here which is usb basically mini and this blue plug here next step we're going to check in the instructions and make sure we have to remove this most of them you have to remove this Per the instructions, we do need to remove the four seven millimeters and take this piece out. These are the three plugs you're gonna remove right here. One, two, and three. So basically one, two, three. And inside the vehicle, we have one long plug, one middle plug, one small plug. That's everything left. Per the instructions, you will need to cut. So you're gonna have to cut here and then cut here to remove this whole big back piece here. I'll kind of show you what they're talking about. So you're gonna have to cut here, and then you're gonna have to cut on the other side to remove this whole back piece right here. Otherwise, the double dim won't fit in. We're gonna take our Dremel right here, and we're gonna go ahead and cut a line right down through here. Definitely not my best cut, but we got the job done. We're just gonna rip it out now. Now we got plenty of room. It's like a football field back there, yeah. We're gonna remove all these, which are T10s, little T10 torques. We're gonna take all these little silver screws out and if you just read through the instructions that comes through it, it's gonna walk you through how to take out the circuit board. So you can basically take this out and put it into this. So we're gonna take everything from the factory and remove it over to the skosh. What's crazy is this is a 2020 model and it has a CD slot on the back, but there's no CD slot on the front. So it's like they must have had all these left over and just use these on the back side. Cause there's no CD slots on the fronts on the new ones. I've noticed that like 18 or 19 and up, they don't put the slots. Um, so we take this piece off here and even has a slot back here, but there's actually nothing back there. It's kind of weird. So now it says you have to remove these, these little ones here to get underneath the circuit board to get these pieces out underneath here. So we're going to do that next. We're going to remove all these and there's a bunch of them. Okay. So we pulled this out and we inserted it into this plastic piece right here. And now we're going to put it into the new unit. So we went ahead and moved the rubber piece over, lined it up with this hole, this hole here. We matched up our circuit board with the circuit board that's on there. And then we put that in there and we'll match that up with the holes. There's two circuit boards, but obviously you can tell they're different because mine are down here at the bottom, probably because it's newer. And then we're going to match that up and then we're going to put this bad boy on and screw it all down with the factory screws that we took out of disassembly from the first piece. We have everything plugged into the brain according to how the diagram is. So you just want to follow the instructions on the diagram, especially the dip switch settings and the steering wheel controls for what radio you have. Since we have a Sony, we are just going to basically plug it into the 3.5 millimeter. The rest of this, we all have to wire up to the Sony and wire up to the vehicle and also plug into this actual new radio bezel. So originally when we did, <clears throat> we started this install, we were going to do the XAV AX150. We were actually going to switch and go with the XAV AX5600. At this particular time while we're doing this video, right now I've waited around approximately seven months on this one. This one I had to go purchase from a retail store and pay above retail to get it. Um, the reason why I'm switching this is this is going in our personal vehicle, our demo vehicle. <clears throat> 
And the price difference between these used to be, this was half the price of this. Now, because of the demand, these have went up like almost $100 to $200. So there's not much of a price difference, but feature-wise, huge. Um, with this particular unit, you get one USB. With this particular unit, you get two. With this unit, you have HDMI, as it shows here, and you also can change the background on this. Also have three sets of five volt pre-outs, three sets of two volt pre-outs. So for all those features and the minimal money difference it is now compared to what it used to be a year ago, this is also an obsolete model, but still an awesome model. This is a current model. We're gonna go ahead and put this in our car only because it just makes sense. Both of these are amazing head units, no matter which one you go with. It just depends on how much money you wanna spend for the features. If these are features you don't care about, go with this head unit. If they are, go with this head unit. We will also do some new videos on the XAV5600 with the HDMI and all that stuff. That way we can kind of show you what the differences of what this model does nowadays. In our last few videos that we've made on the 5600, you will notice as USB port one, USB port two. On the older head units, these were extended to almost three or four feet. Now they have like basically, I call them junctions or brakes. Um, but they only give you one USB extension, which kind of sucks. I don't know why Sony does this. It's like, stop being cheap. Just give us two. Um, I prepared myself one on Amazon, bought a ton of these, like 25 of them, just because all the pioneers and everybody uses them and pioneer doesn't give them to you either. So we went ahead and just bought a bunch of extensions that we're gonna use on these. The other key feature is that is where the HDMI port is, is right here. So it's right on the back of the head unit face. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This will be my first time ever hooking up the HDMI and seeing what it does, but we'll kind of show you that as well. Um, this is the back of the head unit. It's very simple, very easy. You have your antenna port. You have your front and rear RCA. Your sub is the black. The yellow is your camera input. If you run a backup camera, which we will. Your mic input for Bluetooth. Remote, if you're running a remote or steering wheel controls power cord here and Sirius XM over here. So this is the back of the head unit. It's a very simple, easy to use head unit. And here's the front. So we're gonna show you this being installed in here and we'll also go over some of the features that this actual head unit has because it is their highest flagship model. All right, we have everything wired up, our standard colors. The only thing that we piggybacked off of this is we're running three wires for our gauges, so don't really pay much attention to that. The only wire I haven't hooked up is the illumination or dimmer wire because I gotta see how it looks when it goes in here, but basically every color will match each other and you just connect them, that's pretty much it. So this is just a test we're gonna put in there, make sure everything works and see how it goes. Just to let you know, you will have to transfer this over to the new kit as well. You will have to take off the factory pieces, the clips to put on each one of these here. So you're gonna take those and snap those on from the factory one. All right, we have everything plugged in over here. This is for the reverse camera. Um, steering wheel controls goes to here. Your antenna, which we're gonna plug this antenna, this green one here. And to the black one, there is a blue one. We tried it, it didn't work, so we're gonna try the black one. You must plug in all these, your HVAC controls, and follow the diagram that it gives you. So just make sure you plug everything in, just like it shows you in the diagram, and everything should work. So we're gonna plug all this in, make sure everything works, see how it goes. All right, we do have everything plugged in here. We have everything plugged in here, because you have two plugs you have to plug in here. We also got this screwed in with four screws. I'm on here so we're gonna go ahead and test everything see how it works make sure the steering wheel controls work make sure all the heater controls work make sure everything is working simultaneously with this radio we'll see how that goes okay so we do have the radio working we do have this going um... all right so we got everything installed this is hard to see what it really looks like because it looks very distorted in this video but it is not distorted. It looks actually way 100% cleaner. It doesn't look fuzzy or anything like it does in this video. It actually, I'll take some good pictures of it. It looks kind of like this, but it looks really good in real life. Like it actually matches really well to this. It's just hard to tell in this video, but we did get everything working. 
getting ready to try the volume, which is working, which is awesome. So I'm gonna try everything, make sure everything works, and hopefully it will work out just like OEM. So this is amazing. When I put it in reverse, this is really awesome. It throws this in a reverse and throws my parking sensors down here. This is awesome. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. Wow, this Skosh kit is really, really, really nice. I definitely recommend it for anyone. Everything installed in here, we still gotta put everything else together, but looking really good. I wanna show you the back. These are the two plugs that you're gonna plug in. Also I have to plug in the power light, power wire. This is the factory USB. I do wanna try that and see if that is going to work. Um, but we have to use an adapter to see if that's going to work So I'm gonna plug in a new adapter behind here that we ordered which is a mini USB to USB And then I'm gonna plug that into the back of the Sony and hopefully this will work here or this one will work here I'm gonna try to get one of them to at least work so that way I don't have to run aftermarket cables and extensions I can still use the factory um, USB which is awesome because then I can use that location well unfortunately we did use the adapter and neither this USB or this USB will work with plugging that adapter in. So I'm not quite sure why on this car it doesn't do it. I think maybe because it's one um, mini USB that actually goes to both of these. So it has to probably have technology to know what the difference between both is and things like that. So it sucks, but I'll just run my own. Got it all made. We're gonna go ahead and install it in here so we can run our USB extensions. Thank <laughs> you.